What's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're going to rank the discography of grindcore legends Pig Destroyer. <laughs> And hey, if you love these metal ranking tier list videos, I've got a whole playlist of them that I will leave down in the description and the comments, and also plenty of other reasons to subscribe too, because I also do album reviews, album roundups, band camp exploration, and a podcast where I get to interview these very fascinating and talented bands. But let's get into it. All right, so we need to start all the way back in 1998 with Explosions in Ward 6, and this is just a super raw and intense recording. Uh, that, that's, I feel like that's that's the only thing you say about it. That's all that really needs to be said. I do love the very organic drum sound on this. There's a lot of energy behind that, but the production quality is very low. Sounds like everything's recorded through like one microphone, which I guess really fits in with just the grindcore eth ethos and just mentality. So nothing wrong with that, I suppose. But ultimately, like I can't rank this one as high as their other albums because there's there's plenty more to come. Some ideas that I hear on here that get a little bit more fleshed out as things progress. So let's keep on moving, though, to the real classics here. And I want to get into 2001 with Prowler in the Yard. And I feel like for most people, this is like a clear starting point for the band. This is where things get really interesting. I really enjoy this album. I love this really weird yeah, intro they have the with this playing. weird creepy robotic voice kind of introducing the character of jennifer because it's kind of a concept album and then this transition bam right into cheerleader corpses wasted no time there love that drum roll kicking things off great blast beats very intense lots of great riffs on that one just all around a really fun album I love that song. There's other great songs on here, too. Trojan Horror is like an easy classic. I love that kind of like dirty Southern fried sound to the thrash riffing here. It almost in a way sort of reminds me of like every time I die. But yeah, it's just <laughs> it's so much fun to listen to that. And uh, I feel like that kind of Southern twist to it was sort of like a very pig destroyer thing for a long time there's a lot of grindcore bands doing it now but to to my recollection like i remember that standing out as just something that was sort of a trademark of their sound um, naked trees has a really great uh like kind of slayer-esque hook on this one yeah like that that's a straight up like slayer riff for the guitars right there i absolutely love that one um, Strangle with a Halo is good. Um, what else we got here? We got uh, Preacher Crawling. Really solid. Killer drums on this one. Just raunchy blast beats. And the fills on here open up into some really killer, like, double bass runs. Making a lot of cool trans. Like, right there, yeah, like. Lots of great transitions on this one. Lots of cool head bobbing grooves on here, but it's just really a classic no frills grindcore album through and through. Lots of good stuff on here. Hyper violent. It also kind of gets more technical with both the drums and the guitars in certain areas, which I always appreciate. And uh, Terrorizer, by the way, actually named this their third best grindcore album of all time. So notable in that, right? Uh, just most pure and raw, but not necessarily as interesting, I'd say, as some of the other albums to come. I know some people would put this at A or S tier, but for me, it's a pretty solid B album. Very much enjoy it. Definitely deserves sort of recognition in the pantheon of grindcore but i feel like pig destroyer has even better stuff to offer and so speaking of which let's go to 2004 with terrifier this uh for a long time was my favorite pig destroyer album I may still call it my favorite album I'm, I'm i'm kind of on the fence and i will get into that later on but this was definitely the one that got me into them i remember actually catching the grave dancer video on headbangers ball way back when and since then it's still been among my favorite songs just totally infectious riffs on that one let me pull that up yeah this is just all around great song lots of great little chugging riffs <laughs> like that just totally gets stuck in your head and i remember being so struck too just by the image of the band playing because in the video i think it's just 
two people in that one. And I was just so like floored by that because it was not something I was really familiar with. I was I was coming out of new metal phase. So, <laughs> you know, I'm used to bands having like 10 members. So the idea of having just two people in the video playing the music was really weird and foreign to me. So definitely caught my attention in that way. Um, but again, not the only great song on here. Uh, also, I love the shriek after the really quiet intro. So you've got this weird, like just creepy. They, they always like to play with noise still to this day. Just, and then, yeah, you've got the eeriness <laughs> and that just, <laughs> it's like a jump scare kicking off this album. Uh, really enjoy the chugga chugga riffs on Boy Constrictor. Great title too. Obviously a play on Boa Constrictor. Yeah, very cool. Great riffs on that one. Uh, Thumb Sucker has some really uh, sick triplets. Just so many like standout riffs that really get stuck in your head. Um, Torture Ballad. Has some cool stuff going on too. Very noisy track on this one. A lot of those thrash elements coming through again too. And I love this transition that happens later in the song here to this like thrash riff. Like out of nowhere, it just turns into like again, kind of like a Slayer riff there. Very cool stuff. Downpour Girl is fantastic. Um, one of their kind of like getting a little bit. I was going to say longer, but that's not right. Uh, Dead Carnations. What's that drumming? Just so many fantastic songs on this album. You can't say anything bad about it. Also, in case you weren't aware, this is accompanied by the Natasha uh, side album, sort of, which is more of like an ambient, creepy soundscape. And they're meant to be played side by side. And so just another way to experience the album. And another little factoid here. This is on Rolling Stone's top metal albums of all time. I totally agree. For me, this is an S-tier album. It is definitely one of their best, if not the the best. I feel like that's probably not an unpopular opinion, like uh, putting <laughs> putting this down here. But I digress, and let's move on to 2007 with Phantom Limb. And notably, this one has artwork from John Baisley of Baroness. I'm always a fan of his cover art. He's got a very kind of particular style where you see it and you recognize it. Always a lot of... Uh, nudity too <laughs> nothing wrong there uh vocalist jr hayes called this their most deranged metal songs we could come up with that and i suppose so like it's definitely pretty deranged but i gotta say not as a uh, gripping um i get in arguments with people about this sometimes but it's just like you can kind of see with my rankings here um, some of it's probably covered up by me, but uh, a lot of just like less consistency is what I would say about this one. I don't uh, like the longer song approach, which actually we'll talk a little bit about in the, in the transition to the next album. Um, wasn't necessarily a popular choice among all the band members. I just don't feel like they carry these songs all that well, but some of them are like there are some longer songs on here that I like. Uh, Thought Crime Spree pretty solid this is probably one of the fastest most high octane tracks of their entire career so definitely want to pay tribute to where it's due i would even say there's elements of this song that remind me of absu if you're familiar with the u.s black metal band uh now defunct but yeah just a lot of kind of allusions to that i actually did a video on absu if you're not familiar with them you should definitely check that out loathsome also has some really great riffs and this is like is it the not the longest song in the album it's the second longest song in the album i believe at four minutes long and they did a good job with it like i'm not saying they can't do longer songs but i feel like just a lot of the songs on here just feel like filler to me um heathen temples another good one which is you know relatively for the band on, on a longer side great breakdown bouncy heavy metal harmonized riff towards the end See if I can, yeah, this part. I love that. That is so sick. <laughs> and this part too. The harmonized, like thrash, heavy metal kind of riff there. I can't get enough of that. Like I eat that up. So there are some fantastic out, uh, songs on here. The Machete Twins too is kind of a classic. The screaming there. I love that little break with that scream too. Like 
I, I again, I'm not saying this is a bad album by any means. I know some people really seem to love this, but really, besides the debut, this is my least favorite album to kind of revisit just as a whole. Like, again, I'll throw these favorite songs into a playlist and I'll love them to death. But as far as listening to the album start to finish, I'm not really into it. So I'm going to put this at C. In fact, that makes me want to, I'm going to drop this down to D, which I know some purists are going to get really upset with me for that, but I don't care. This is my opinion and my, uh, <laughs> my rodeo. So that's what I'm going to do. And we are going to keep on moving here to 2012 with Book Burner. And obviously, big gap there. This was a five-year gap between Phantom Limb and this album. Lots of kind of adversity and changes going into the lineup and the equipment. Original drummer Brian Harvey was replaced by Adam Jarvis. And this kind of like, there's some turmoil in the songwriting. Like I said, my, my understanding of kind of like looking into the events was that Brian Harvey was more on board with the longer songs and kind of the direction of Phantom Limb and uh, not so much <laughs> with some of the other members. And so he actually said that his only goal for this album was that it was fast and brutal. And ultimately, he was very happy about the abundance of songs on the album that were on the much shorter side, which you definitely see when you actually look at the run times here like a lot more tracks we got 19 tracks here but they're all much much shorter um not much of them running over like a, a minute and a half most of them kind of clocking in under two minutes but we do have some breakaways there too so it's kind of like a reaction to phantom limb is the way you can look at this album and i feel that right off the start we're we're made aware that this is not phantom limb like we kick right into it much shorter intro too to kind of like not really even bother lulling you in they just kick in the fucking door on this one and i'm i'm a fan of that um the underground man is an another sick track just fast ferocious 32 second just classic grindcore songwriting there with that approach i'm uh, i know some people would probably prefer that i play a little bit more but i'm trying not to get claimed here gotta be always gotta be careful of that um, I like the really shrill, high-pitched shrieks on Eve. And then uh, the the closing chugger throwback to kind of Grave Dancer that I hear on some of this. Yeah, see, yeah, here. We've got some backup vocals on here that are just really raw and ugly and intense. But yeah, and then this riff just totally reminds me of uh, Grave Dancer. So it feels like a little bit of a throwback there. Valley of the Geyser has this kind of sludgy, almost like domination era, morbid angel sound to it. So a little bit different, slower track, not as into Pig Destroyer for the slower stuff, but that one I will make an exception for. Baltimore Strangler has some amazing energy and pace changes that I really adore. So very kind of interesting a little bit like almost like mathy track that's not the best word for it but just the way that they like to keep shifting through these different paces and ideas i also like the intro on bug it's this really eerie like siren going in the background before we kick into high gear once again dirty knife is one of my favorites we got these really cool like slidey riffs let me get to that part yeah they're doing, doing, meow. Lots of nice chug on that one, too. Just plenty to love there. Uh, Totaled and Kamikaze Heart both live up to their name in that they are just super heavy. Like like <laughs> JR said, fast and brutal. That was his only goal, and that definitely shows on some of these songs. I'd say most of the songs, really. Just like pure intensity, no, no frills. There's also, though, kind of like a, on the one longer track on here, this four plus minute permanent funeral, we got like, again, this intro, very Slayer, very kind of raining blood. Like, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but in any case, uh, very just no BS, solid record, very much enjoyed. I'd say even just going back and re-listening to all these in a row again, I like it even more than I did already. So I kind of want to put it at A tier. Um, I had toyed with putting it at B, but I think ultimately it deserves A. And yeah, definitely something that you want to check out. A little bit more uh, I wanted to share from Hayes. So he explained that 
Book Burner, the song from which the album drew its title, was based on Julius Caesar's quote, men freely believe what they wish. And for Hayes, the quote represented the way the world works now. There's so much information which you think is a good thing, but now it can be hard to decide what's true and what people actually believe and why they believe it. Empirical evidence only matters if people allow it to matter to them. So I, fe I felt like you don't even have to burn the book. People don't even read them. People are being pulled in so many different directions by so many different ideas that even for myself, it's extremely hard to even know what the truth is. It used to be that you sought the truth, you would do it in books. Nowadays, there's so many things assaulting you at the same time that you just have to choose. And I wanted to share that in full when I found it, because remember, this is this is him saying this in 2012. And here we are eight years later, and I feel like that quote is truer now than it ever was. So I'm not going to get into a whole thing with that, but I just found that to be interesting. But let it, let's let let's keep the train on moving here to 2018, just two years ago at the time of me recording this, to Head Cage. And so another quote, across, across 12 tracks, Pig Destroyer weaved together harrowing tales of philosophical dualities, touching on mortality and depression, fear and violence, and the darkest complexities of the human condition, all told through the distorted lens of delightfully transgressive vocalist lyricist J.R. Hayes. Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. There are cameos on this album, too, from Richard Johnson and Cat Cats of Agora for agoraphobic nosebleed and dylan walker of full of hell definitely a fan of them as well done some videos talking about them uh this album was a little bit divisive because it's it's almost like i i'd say it's almost barely a grind album like it's more of like a groove metal album there's a lot more focus on the groove we're back to kind of longer mid-length songs here but i have to say like the way they're written on this so much better leaps and bounds better than what they did on phantom limb i think i think they're much more skillfully constructed and i love the uh radio intro here to contrast the incoming violence we're about to be treated to with just these uh yeah at the very beginning here with these kind of like loungy sort of like almost like 20s era i think like music and then we get the distortion and slowly amplifies and then right into dark train <laughs> so good fantastic opener the production is notably a lot more modern a lot more kind of pristine on this one too which i like i actually think it works really well on this album some people not as appreciative of it because this is grindcore we keep it raw we keep it uh intense and uh yeah so do with that what you will but i think it sounds really good army of cops uh another Regardless of your opinions, a very relevant song, <laughs> listening to it right now. And I I do love that. Just get on your knees. Like, lots of sing-along moments on this album. Like, I don't always think of Pig Destroyer as being a very, like, sing-along, hooky kind of band. They've got the guitar hooks, but there's a lot of vocal hooks on this album, which I really love. Because I'm more of a kind of singer, and I like to sing along with the songs and so there's a lot of just great like crowd pleasing scream along moments uh not only this uh why don't you get on your knees which is one of the best ones but they're they're really all over this album circle river again has some cool southern fried sounding riffs on it again just drawing comparisons for me to a, a much grindier look at like what every time i do uh, every time i die is doing uh there's a like almost deftone soulfly riff on uh concrete beast yeah here's the part like if you know the deftone song head up that features max cavalera from soulfly and previously sepultura like there's a riff on that song that's very similar to that and that just stood out to me being such a big deftones fan and early soulfly fan um amazing bass intro on last the last song that just sickening kind of almost sexual groove to it very cool with the uh like police sirens in the background of it as well house of snakes kind of if you uh, are a fan of norma jean it's got sort of like a memphis will be laid to waste vibe which uh, if you don't know that song pause the video and go look it up on youtube that is like one of the best songs of all time definitely one of the best uh norma jean songs ever yeah here's the part this part, in particular. 
Um, lots of grind. There are still some grindier tracks, too. Again, I already played some of Dark Train. Um, that one has a really cool, like, D-beat explosion, too. Yeah, that part. <laughs> you gotta love that. Um, the torture fields. So, yeah, we haven't abandoned grind here at all. But, yeah, once we get into it, this one, like, this is just straight up kill them all, <laughs> destroy them kind of grind. Terminal Itch is just plain demented. Like, this is just one of the just most disgusting sounding, wretched songs that you can listen to, not only on the album, but just from the band in general. Mount Skull also, just straight up grind aggression. Love those drums again. I, I love this album. In fact, I would go so far to say that every track slaps on this album. I know there'd be a lot of disagreements with that, but uh, ultimately, I love it. I want to put this at A tier, too. In fact, I'm kind of teetering on the edge of putting this S tier. Like, this has kind of become my second favorite Pig Destroyer album, and it's just so re-listenable, too. So it may become my favorite Uh I've been listening to it. I, when it came out, I listened to it nonstop. And then lately when I was uh, reviewing all these, I got stuck on this one again and just kept replaying it at home, in the car, in my headphones, on the stereo, whatever. It's just a fantastic album. I know that's not necessarily a popular opinion, but I encourage you, like, if you weren't sure about it and it's been a little while since you listened to it, go back and give it another chance because I think you might be surprised at what happens. And that brings us finally to 2020 with this new EP, The Octagonal Stairway. And I gotta say, it's it's pretty darn good. Um, I know they have a lot of other EPs, so some people are going to ask, like, why didn't you review the other EPs? Partially for time, because this video is already getting on the long side, and then partially, too, because I just wanted to focus on this new release. Um, the, the opening track, really solid. In fact, I'd say the first three tracks on this are really good. Got great riffs. Feels like kind of a, an extension of stuff on Headcage. In fact, there's a track called Headcage. But the Cavalry, the lead singer, great. Listen to that riff. Like, I absolutely love that. I did a reaction to this music video, and I had so much fun listening to it. I would put this up there with some of the best songs that the, the band has made to date. So this is definitely a draw from the riff to just the construction to the overall just brevity of it. Cameraman is also good. Yeah, it's it's a solid EP. Like, there's some really good stuff on here. Now, the first half is really what's kind of made for me. Then the second half is much more kind of just their the experimental noise sound of the band. Um, solid dark atmosphere. We've got this kind of more sample-driven sort of interlude here. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting, um, kind of like this industrial beat, sort of reminds me of like a skinny puppy interlude or something at times, and then head cage to just this eerie, very wet sounding, kind of gross, like running water, um, this one again, just, uh, it, it's, it's cool, but it's not really my vibe, I'm not as much into like ambience and noise and drone. If you're into that though, like I, I do feel like these are done very well. I love the atmosphere behind them. I, I definitely don't dislike them. It's just not something that I like would replay over and over again. Soundwalker is really good too. And this is an 11 plus minute track of just these noise soundscapes. And again, it kind of reminds me of Kevin Key of Skinny Puppy, his sort of side work and solo work that he's done has sounded quite a bit like this. And I do like his style. So um, definitely some some cool stuff to check out here. So yeah, it's a solid EP. Definitely, if you're a Pig Destroyer fan, you can't go wrong picking this up. I would definitely recommend it. If you're not as much into the band, this is not the best entry point. I, I, I guess it does kind of showcase like really quickly sort of the two sides but really more so, I would recommend people probably start with Terrifier or potentially even Head Cage. So I think I got to give the new EP a B. Good stuff. I like it better than some of their some of their other stuff. And um, it's just another good extension. But the Cavalry Man, like that is definitely going in my favorites playlist and probably a workout playlist, too, because I could see myself going ham for that one. And I didn't even intend on it. But uh, yeah, a little 
little pig pun for you there. A little little dad joke to close this whole thing out. So yeah, those are my rankings for Pig Destroyer. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Which album is your favorite? Which is your least favorite? Uh, where do you like strongly disagree with me on some of these rankings and why? Let's get a discussion going. I also now have a video up of bands for fans of Pig Destroyer. So you can check that out there too if you want to hear some more underground groups that have a similar sound. Some of them branching out in other directions too, but if you're into Grindcore, definitely check out that video. And again, just stick around because there's plenty more videos coming after this one. So please do subscribe, like the video, and don't go anywhere. Also in the description, you can find links to this tier maker so you can make your own list. The uh, social media, so you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, uh, the email newsletter, metaltrenches.com, where you can find even more content and reviews, and also our Patreon and subscribe star if you want to make that extra jump to becoming a full-on supporter. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.